like Super Tucano aircraft arrive in Nigeria for use in the war on terror. Nigerians in diaspora also arrive in Nigeria for a week in for Nigeria. We'll be finding out what it is all about and how life abroad as a Nigerian is. The Olympic Games begin today, triumphing over a COVID-19 threat. Just how well will Nigeria do? Wally Scott will be on ground to give us an answer. You are welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. I am Aneta Felix. And I am Osaogi Ogbawa. Thank God it's Friday. And uh, of course, uh, thanks for staying with us all through the week. Good to see you this morning. How are you? I am great. How are you? Fantastic. Okay, let's begin the morning with some great news. So, Nigeria has been battling the Boko Haram insurgency since 2009. And uh, it's been a challenge, you know, fighting all these insurgents, the, or, you know, all the war on terror. And um, since 2020, we heard, uh, you know, about a new deal that Nigeria will be getting the Super Tucano aircraft. And that's to fight this insurgents. We heard that the Super Tucano aircraft are very effective, you know, in bombarding terrorist settlements and all of that. And that Nigeria had this agreement to ship them in um, to the country. Uh, this was as far back as 2020. That this was going to come in 2019. So we know that on the 15th of June, um, we heard from the Nigerian military that the aircraft, you know, had just left the U.S. and will pass through about five other countries to come to Nigeria. And yesterday we heard the good news that um, we have taken delivery of six Tucano aircraft and that this will help Nigeria, you know, go a lot further in her anti-terrorism war. Yeah, um, I still need to confirm if they actually have arrived in Nigeria or, you know, we've only just taken delivery. I think they still have um, uh, a couple of places to stop before they eventually get into Nigeria proper, uh, sometime at the end of the month, I believe. Um, well, yes, um, I guess we'll say congratulations. Uh, the president had mentioned that they were meant to be arriving since 2018. You know, there was some delay. Um, and eventually, you know, now we are, um, you know, talking about, you know, uh, you know uh, um, receiving them. Um, but there also is some, you know, talk and some criticism, you know, and uh, the response that I've seen also uh, to this, aside celebrating, you know, the fact that we now have six Super Tucano aircraft. Uh, there's also people who have, you know, asked if, if uh, really it was our lack of aircraft that has, uh, you know, uh, you know, let us um, or prevented us from winning the war against terrorism, and there's a, you know, a strong argument that it really isn't lack of proper aircraft. Um, the ones that we've have we've had uh, have been, you know, shot down lately. Not, I think it was last week we heard of another aircraft that was shot down, another fighter jet that was shot down. Um, we've had about four or five, about four uh, uh, Nigerian Air Force planes uh, crash in the last five six months. Um, so yes, we do you know, need better equipment, we, knew, we do need you know, more planes, I believe, but you know, the question really is, is, you know, is it the lack of aircraft that has prevented us from winning the war? And I personally don't think so. I think you know, there's a lot more that we have not been able to do. Um, there's a lot more that we have still not done that has prevented us from actually winning the war against Boko Haram and ISWAP and now you know, the bandits. There are still you know, kidnappings going on every now and then, and you know, aircraft are not going to be the answers to those kidnappings. The banditry and the killing of um, you know, citizens in different parts of Nigeria, in Borno, in Katsina, in Southern Kaduna, and some of all those places, Benue inclusive, um, aircraft are not you know, the answer, or Super Tucano jets are not the answer to those questions. And so, when we get these aircraft, you know, are we going to start doing what is necessary? Are we going to start um, um, actually arresting sponsors and financiers? Are we going to do better with our borders and ensure that weapons are not being moved into Nigeria for these terrorists? Are we going to, you know, put men on ground that, you know, actually can gather information and know which of these, um, the, who, who the leaders of these bandits are? Those who are boasting on camera that they killed Nigerian soldiers, are we going to actually find them and arrest them? Um, so, um, while we will clap and say, oh yeah, we now have six Super Tucano jets, uh, there is still the perspective that, you know, that really was never the, the problem. It's not the lack of jets 
um, that you know it was a problem. I also saw someone say that you know the five hundred million dollars or how um, um, the amount of money that was spent on those aircraft could have been spent on many other things. You know that will have been more beneficial to Nigerians in the long run, and not just jets. Um, there's education, there's infrastructure, there's healthcare, there's so much more that we could have spent that money on and actually been serious with the fight against insurgency and the fight against terror um, and, you know, do the groundwork that is necessary. Every time that these questions are asked, there, you know, there's excuses that, oh, you know, we, when you're fighting guerrilla warfare, you know, it's pretty difficult to tackle and that's why it's been difficult to handle in Afghanistan and in Pakistan, some of all those other countries. Well, it's guerrilla warfare, so you don't need aircraft to fight that. Um, but that basically is just, you know, a different perspective from celebrating. Mm, yeah, I understand your angle, but um, it, you know, when you're talking about um, fighting terrorism, there definitely, there definitely is the need for infrastructure, and there are some aircrafts that can do what others can't. For example, the two kind of aircraft when we look at, you know, all the improved, you know, features. It has higher um, flying capabilities. It's it's faster. It's lighter. So all these things just give us an edge in some way. You know, it, it's you know, it just is better in fighting insurgency that really is why it was built you know specifically modeled for you know combat so that's exactly why they're investing in that and about four more would arrive the country in September and um, that's what we've heard from the federal government and about um, um, six more would arrive in September and a four more before the end of the year hopefully uh, on Monday we would have um, um, security experts um, you know to have a, you know a, a larger conversation about this and understand um, if the battle against insurgency, yes, you know, like I said, yes, you know, aircrafts would be, are good. Yes, more equipment are good. But is that really what we, what, what, is that really the reason we've not been able to win the war? Absolutely not. Um, would they help? Yes. You know, would they maybe be more difficult to shoot down like the other ones are the one that, that were shot down last week? Maybe yes. Um, but is that what we really have lacked? And that's, is that the reason we haven't won the war against insurgency and banditry and the rest of these groups bringing up here and then kidnapping? Absolutely not. But congratulations, Nigeria. All right. Our next uh, top trending story this morning is about the Living Faith Church Winners Chapel. Um, we heard the story earlier in the week about how um, a member or a pastor of the church was sacked. Um, actually, about 40 pastors, because in that video where he you know, was ranting about you know, the fact that his uh, appointment was terminated, he mentioned that there were about 40 other pastors who received letters of termination as well. So we know that pastors of that church you know, were laid off. And um, in the rants that they mentioned, they said that they had certain deliverables that they didn't meet up with. And that pastor made claims about money. And that conversation also came up online, people saying, why should the church be seen as a business or money-making venture? But um, finally, we have words from the um, pastor of the church, um, Bishop David Oedipo. He spoke um, recently to his congregation addressing that matter, saying that you know churches cost money to build. And he explained that some of the churches cost as much as 35 million naira, and that you know they never owe workers, that they employ so many workers across all the branches of the church nationwide. They never owe them. They have to pay them, you know, with money. And that when he's talking about laying off workers, it's not necessarily about money. In his words, money is nonsense. We've never lacked it, yet we've never asked for it. Those were his words. He went on to then say that it's a matter of fruitfulness, you know. And when you check the comment section, you know, when people reacted to this, they went on to say, oh, yes, still the Bible verse I mentioned the other time in the book of Luke, where, you know, um, there was uh, an analogy there of a tree that wasn't bearing fruit and, you know, Jesus ordering it to be cut down since it wasn't fruitful. So they went on to say, yes, these pastors weren't being fruitful because they should be winning souls for God and it wasn't about money. Let's actually take a listen to Bishop David Oedipo say those words himself. Okay. Oh, food, blood, Social media was dead. Dead. 
we have more employees in this organization than most of the states. No one is owed a dime salary, and we don't borrow, we don't beg, ask our bank whether we take over draft. We are covenant bond people, walking in the light of God's world, enjoying an open heaven. We have fully delivered the first phase of 1,000 plus buildings in the rural churches. <laughs> None of those churches can generate that fund in the next 30 years. No, we are haunting after souls. Money nonsense. Money, we've never lacked it, and yet we have never prayed for it. We are just simply obeying God and He's backing up <laughs> what He's asking us to do. Awesome God. You don't need so much mathematics to know a thousand buildings that is not 1,000 naira each, that's not 10 million each, that's not 12 million each, that's not 14 million each. Some attachment will say, you know, uh, no well, um, Bishop Oyedo put there, um, of course, uh, clearing the air on uh, why uh, pastors were sacked. Um, and like I said, you know, when we had this conversation early in the week, I think I uh, was saying that it's important that the church lets us understand what they mean by unfruitful. Um, when you say you're not bearing fruit, what exactly does that mean? Um, is it with increasing numbers of, you know, church members or is it with um, increasing, you know, finances, you know, for the church? And what is the trick for increasing, um, you know, church members, if that's, you know, what the target is, if it is by winning souls for God, then what is exactly is the trick that these pastors do not have that, have, you know, have gotten them fired? And I'm, I'm also not very, very, and that's, what, that's one of the things that I'm still very, very uncomfortable with, the fact that, you know, you get an employment letter as a pastor, you know, you know since when did it become a job that you, you know, employ, you know, you, you employ someone as, as a pastor? Do people get employed as imams? Do you have, a, you know, a, a, an employment letter when you go to a mosque and say, okay, I'm now the imam of this church, I'm going to get paid salary every month? Um, and when they were recruiting these pastors, didn't they, you know, put them through any training? Didn't they go through any process that makes them believe that, yes, these ones will be fruitful? Wasn't it the pastor, you know, uh, position a calling from God, you know, or not? Um, do people then apply for these things the same way they apply to be bankers or to be lawyers? Um, and you, that, that's really where I'm confused. I can't How speak do you employ? on if, you know, you know, the other last point you mentioned, if people apply to be pastors. But what I can say is that even in the word itself, religious organization, it's implied that this is an organization. People are paid to work there. I don't attend the church. I can't speak for them. But I can say that the fact is... It's an organization. For them to have branches all over, they have to have an organized system of work. If not, I mean, everything would just be in disarray. So I can understand where he's coming from regarding paying salaries and that those who are not meeting up to Church workers all work for free. I've never, I've never said church workers, you know, go there for free. There's, there's obviously going to be paid. You get paid for the work that you do. Even if you're in the, you know, music team, you're in the choir, you're, you know, you, so you, you definitely will So if you get paid, you don't, you don't expect you know, to get paid, for paid forever. You can um, be let go. You can be employed, so to speak. So? Yes. But when you, when you are asking for fruitfulness and you're paid as a pastor to be fruitful, the idea, the Christ-like idea, the you know, biblical idea is to win souls for Christ. How do you win souls for Christ? Yeah, so that's the question you should, you, we should be asking you, these people. I mean, so when so you, when you, you, where's the challenge with not being able to win souls I, for I Christ and then you're I can't really sad. explain their metrics, but I do know that you need money to run. To even live as a human being in Nigeria, you definitely need money to survive. Talk less of building an organization that is, you know, that has a goal, which is winning tools and expanding. I can't really begin to defend them to say, oh, you need money to print your pamphlets or to buy fuel in your generators. I, I can't begin to do not, that. It's not with, you know, whether Maybe you need money or not. Maybe he needs to give more explanation. But all I'm saying is that, a religious organization is an organization at the end of the day, and they need structures to work. So don't, you've, you've gone back to that point, and I've said, I understand that. Um, and the challenge I have is not with, you know, the fact that the church needs money to run. Of course, it does need money to run. And I said it last, a couple of days ago, on Monday or Tuesday, when we talked about this, it does need money to run. Um, these churches need to be built, and they're not built with prayers. They're built with money. Um, people need to be paid salaries. Uh, the churches need to be painted, need to be swept. <laughs> they're paid with, with money. 
Um, but when you say that a pastor has been sacked for being unfruitful, that's where my challenge is. Um, why wasn't he winning souls for Christ? You know, and what, what do they you, go through? You might need through to ask before, him himself. Yeah. I don't know. So what do they go through <laughs> before they get to that state where you, where you then employ them and say, okay, you would make a good pastor for this branch. Go and, you know, win souls for Christ. Uh, do they at some point stop doing the things that they were taught in biblical school? That, that's where I'm confused. And so when you sack them, do you then look out for new people and then train them also and then say, okay, yes, you seem to have gone through the pastor class uh, now you can go handle yes, this branch here and trained. there. Um, and, you know, hopefully you can win souls for Christ. And, and winning souls for Christ, what does that mean also? Does that mean an increasing, you know, um, uh, congregation Seems number? Seems implied. Ooh, okay. Okay, um, obviously religious debates are, you know, long running. It doesn't seem like something that will end anytime soon. But anyway, here's where we are. Um, Bishop David Oedipo came out to say it's not about money, it's about winning souls for Christ. How exactly he means and how they intend to do that, um, we really don't have the details. But that's our top trending stories for you this morning. Thank you very much for starting your um, very beautiful Friday morning with us. I will take a break here to join Mr. G.D. Johnson for Off the Press.